today I'm going to be talking about planned pooling. So you can see it in this hat. Planned pooling is something that happens when you're using a yarn that is multiple different colors within the yarn itself. It's not a color work technique because you're just working with one ball of yarn, um, but there are very specific kinds of yarn that this works with and there are very specific um, sort of things you have to keep in mind to make this happen. Uh, but it's pretty cool and it's not magic at all. It's pretty easy to figure out once you get the idea of what you're looking for. So we're gonna talk about it today. Um, so this exact project um, is a hat that I designed using a specific yarn that was dyed with, uh, with colors going in a specific way, kind of that I intended to have this happen with. But this is not the only yarn in the universe that will do this. Um, so we're just going to talk about sort of what the yarn has to have to make this happen. And then what your project has to have to work with that kind of yarn um, to make this planned pooling happen. Um, and that will let you use this technique, um, not just in this pattern, um, but in any pattern or project that you would like that sort of fit the rules. So the first thing that you need in yarn that will let you do this planned pooling is you need a variegated yarn. And so that means a yarn where you have small little sections of the yarn that are different colors. So it's not gonna work if your yarn is all the same color. So if you have a yarn that is all blue, obviously you're not gonna get it to do this. You've gotta have a yarn that's different colors and they have to be different colors in a very specific way. So if you see this, we've got a couple, maybe six inches of a section that is one color, pink, and then we have six inches of a color that is a different, or six inches of another color, yellow, six inches of another color, <clears throat> six inches of another color green, six inches of another color blue. Um, we have about the same length of section of yarn, of a strand of yarn that is one color, and then it moves on to a new color that is again about that same amount. So you are gonna want um, sections of color that are kind of longer like this. So if your variegated yarn has like one inch of a color and then one inch of a color and then one inch of a color, that's probably not gonna work. You're gonna want like three to six inches of, of a section of color, just like you're getting here. And you're gonna want those color sections to be about the same length as each other. So six inch, six inch, six inch, six inch all the way around. There can be a little bit of variation in there, but you don't want 12 inches, a half an inch, six inches, 18 inches, um, kind of a thing. You want them in the neighborhood. Um, so that is what it looks like when it's in a skein. I think it's very easy to tell when it's in a skein. You can see those really easily. This is that exact same yarn put into a ball. And so you're seeing it looks very different if you look at it from the side. But if you pull out sections of it and actually look at the yarn, you can see about a six inch section of pink, about a six inch section of orange, about a six inch section of yellow. And so you're, you've got the same effect with that. And you can see I'm getting the same effect as I work with the same yarn. So this came off the same ball, um, this one and this one, and then this is what it looks like before you wind it up. Um, this is our hand dyed yarn. Um, Dave has dyed the neon rainbows um, right now, but um, this yarn is not the only yarn that will do this. Here's a more commercially available example. This is a Malabrigo yarn in the colorway um, number 170 Pinsamiento, I think is how you would say that. And you can see that exact same thing. You've got a couple of inches of the purpley blue speckles, a couple of inches of the yellowy speckles. Purpley blue for a few inches, yellowy for a few inches. So you can see that same thing. So this is what you're looking for um, in that kind, if you plan to do planned pooling. Just wanna show you a couple of examples of things that will not work. Self-striping yarn. Noro is the brand um, that to me is the mo that I think of most when I think of self-striping yarn, but there's tons of great brands out there. If your yarn makes stripes on its own as you work with it, you will get an effect that looks similar to this. Um, it won't be on the diagonal like this is, but it will, it will look like it's making stripes. 
but you're not doing planned pooling. You're doing planned striping. <laughs> um, you're working with the self-striping yarn and it is making stripes. Um, so this is a different thing. You can still follow the pattern. You'll still get a stripey hat, um, but it won't be because of planned pooling. It will be because you have long sections of you're going to have a bunch of rows in a row where your yarn is all the same color before it changes to the next one. And you can see what that looks like in the ball. You see like the individual sections of stripey colors. Another yarn that's not going to work is a variegated yarn. So this is another yarn from Malabrigo. Um, this is their um, colorway Anniversario, which is one of our personal favorites. Um, and you can see on here, it's not those chunks of very distinctly different colors that are at the same intervals. So you can see you have a section that's one color, but it kind of gradually bleeds into another one. It's way longer than six inches. It's not consistent. Some of, um, some of the sections are kind of that red color throughout. Some of them are the green color throughout. You've got some strands that have a couple of inches of green, some that have 12 inches of green, some that have 12 inches of red. It just does not have that consistent very straightforward, very regimented color look to it. So this will not give you a planned pooling effect either. Um, the other example that wouldn't is if you've got a variegation or like a hand paint where it's almost like every stitch is gonna be a different color, the little sections are really, really small. So hopefully now we understand what yarn, what kind of yarn we need to use to make this happen. The next thing I wanna do is show you why. Um, why does it happen? It's not magic. It's just the way, it's just math. Um, that's, that's all you got. So what I have done here in my highly sophisticated, um, where I stole my kids' crayons, um, actually markers. Um, so if we think about this as the yarn, so here's like our skein of yarn. Um, in, a, in a loop here, we've got color one, color two, color three, color four, color one, color two, color three, color four. We've got about the same length of all of them. And I just label, labeled these with um, the, let's assume there's about, as, about enough yarn in each of these sections to make four stitches. So let's say four inches of yarn makes four stitches in the pattern that you're using. So this would be four stitches of pink, four stitches of yellow, four stitches of blue, four stitches of green. And then you just repeat it. So this is how the yarn is dyed. It, so it's in your skein this way. And if you think about, if you unravel that skein, your yarn just keeps connecting. It just keeps repeating that pattern as you're pulling a strand out of it. So if you were to think about this as we have 32 stitches of color before it repeats itself, and it's actually since you're doing this twice in a row, you've actually, really, you've got 16 stitches before the yarn repeats itself with what color it's going to be. So if you are knitting with this yarn and you are doing a project where you have 16 stitches across the row or around the round if you're doing a hat, if you've got 16 stitches there and you put, if you've got 16 stitches around and then your next row, you also have 16 stitches around, you're putting the first 16 stitches that are in that color progression in one round and then your next round that you're knitting on top of that, your color progression and your stitches are working identically. And so the first four stitches of that round are gonna be with the same color and it's gonna create a total stripe. If, they, if you keep going, you're going to get that exact same thing is gonna just keep happening and you're going to get a completely straight up and down stripe. So it won't look like this because this stripe moves across if you have it exactly centered, you're gonna have stripes that go straight up and down instead of around. If you start to offset things a little bit. So let's say we have, instead of our 16 stitches, we're gonna do 28. So we're gonna do 28 stitches. I put my beginning so here's my beginning of my sort of section of yarn, and here's my end right here. So I'm gonna go from purple at the beginning to blue at the end. So I connect these together <clears throat> just like that. So I went instead of 16, which would have 16 stitches, would have stacked right up on 16 stitches, 16 stitches, and they would have gone in a straight line. If I don't do 
an even multiple of that, so 16 or 32 or, or what have you, if I offset it a little bit. So let's say I do 28 on that one, and then I do, <clears throat> so when I end that row, I still have four stitches worth of green that, that's coming up, that's what's next in line. I've done my 28 stitches, I finished the yarn for that row is blue, the next yarn, the, the next section of yarn is green. So I come over here, I finish that. The next section of yarn that I start with is green. So green is gonna be here. It's gonna go green, blue from here. And we are gonna go around this way. So now you can see that these don't line up anymore your hmm, your blue does not sit directly on top of your blue now your green sits exactly on top of the blue and the blue sits exactly on top of the yellow and the yellow sits exactly on top of the purple and then the purple sits exactly on top of the green so this is how you start to get that diagonal happening you're not lining up if your color progression um, 16 stitches exactly repeats that color progression. If you just have 16 stitches, you'll get stripes. They'll stack perfectly on top of each other. <clears throat> It'll just make a straight stack. If you end up shifting things over one, now is when you start to get a diagonal. So you can see the diagonal happen happening. If you shift them really randomly, and they shift all over the place. So you have, it's, it's not anywhere close to the right number of stitches. They change every, they change every row and they go all over the place and it just makes chaos. It doesn't make any kind of a pattern at all. That is what creates this section of the hat. There's no, um, it's not very close to an even number um, of how much yarn you need to make the, um, the color progression complete. You've just got, they're just overlapping randomly with each other and it just makes sort of an all over speckly kind of a look to your project. When you're close to the number of color progression. So if you hit the exact number, for my example here, it's 16. If you hit 16 exactly, you get straight lines up and down. If you do 18, you're, you're over two or you're over four. So if you do 12 or you do 24, you're gonna get diagonals that go one way or they go the other way, depending on um, how close to straight up and down you, you're getting that. Um, the more, the farther away you get from the number, the steeper your diagonal is gonna get. So it's if it's exactly a color, um, a color repeat, so your colors take 16 stitches to go around and you do 16 stitches, the lines are going to be straight. If the colors um, take 16 and you do 18, they're going to be a little bit over. If you do 20, they're going to be a little bit more over. If you do 24, they're going to be a little bit more over. If you do 37, they're going to be all, all over the place. So the more you are off on that color progression, the more steep, the closer to sideways your stripes are going to go. Perfectly on, straight up and down. The farther away you get off of that, the more dramatic that is going to be. And if you go too far, one way or the other, it's not going to make lines at all. It's just going to make random, which can still be pretty, but it's not going to be that planned pooling. So that's what's happening at the top. I hope that that explanation made a little bit of sense. Um, and I think once you get started with it, I think it will make more sense as you're working. Um, but what I want to do is give you some practical tips if you are trying to get a planned pooling piece, what should you do? Well, the first thing that you should do if you don't have guidance, so this is going to come as a kit where I've done this for you already and I'm going to tell you what numbers are probably going to work. Um, if that's the case, start there. Um, if you have found the perfect yarn and you want to use it and you just need to know, okay, how do I get started? What I would recommend is 
find your color progression. So look at the, a strand of yarn, pull it out until you see the color start to repeat. So like here, you're gonna pull out a length of yarn until you can see, okay, it goes pink, yellow, blue, green, pink, yellow, blue, green. Okay, I see that color progression. I'm gonna take one or two sections of that. So I've got two here. I'm just gonna take that length of yarn um, and I am going to knit with that length of yarn and I'm gonna see how many stitches of each color do I get? How many stitches total does it take for me to get from where that color section starts to where that color section ends? Um, what I would highly recommend doing is cast on with a different yarn. So cast on with some waist yarn because a cast on uses a different amount of yarn per stitch than regular knitting does. So cast on with regular just waist yarn, something else from a different project that you've got. And then find your one length or two lengths of a color progression in your yarn that you've got that you want to use and knit. And when you're finished, you get to the end of that one or two color repeats count how many stitches it was. Was it 16 stitches? Was it 90 stitches? Um, what was it? Write it down. What you wanna do is when you are deciding your project and how you wanna work it, you're gonna want to aim for a project that uses about that many stitches. So if you find out that the perfect number um, to make it is 16, 16 does one repeat, um, I would recommend choose a number of stitches for your project or choose a project that's gonna allow you to pick somewhere between probably 12 stitches and 20 stitches. Kind of be no more than about four stitches out in either direction. Um, and make a little swatch. Make a little sample piece to see how that pattern is working. What the angle of that movement is. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, what do you got? And that's gonna get you a good place to start. Um, you are also going to want to keep in mind that it will only work if your project has the same number of stitches in every round. So that's why it's, it's not at all a planned pool at the top, because at the top, every two rounds you're changing the stitch count. And so as you change the stitch count, it uses different amounts of yarn and they start overlapping and, and doing weird stuff. So in the body of the hat, and you can see right where that transition happens, right there, um, where you suddenly hit the final stitch count that you're using. In this case, it was 90 stitches. Um, so your 90 stitches, you hit that mark and you keep that same rate of stripe and same angle of stripes and all of that stuff happening from that point onward. You'll notice with this hat, I did not do ribbing at the bottom. Um, the pattern takes you through how you actually create this little facing that folds under. The reason that I chose to do that is because ribbing, switching from knit stitches to purl stitches, that uses a very, very slightly different amount of yarn compared to just knitting every stitch of every row. And so if I would have changed to ribbing at the bottom, suddenly, instead of everything being consistently the same, right where I changed to ribbing, those, those stripes are gonna change the angle that they're going at. You're gonna get a change in there. And I didn't want that. I wanted this to be all the same and even the whole way. Um, so those are kind of some things to keep in mind. Figure out how many stitches it takes for you to do a full color repeat and then choose a pattern that's gonna let you do about that many stitches. You can probably go four to six stitches more, four to six stitches less um, to, to kind of play with it and get it exactly how you want it. You can also use multiples of that. So if you're thinking, okay, well, it only takes me 16 stitches to get um, through a full color repeat, but I don't like, I can't make a hat with 16 stitches. My head is bigger than that. Um, it can be a multiple of 16. So it can be 32, it can be 64, it can be anything like that. Um, and you're still gonna get that same effect. It's just instead of you getting one set of stripes that goes all the way around, you're gonna get, um, instead of just one blue that kind of goes the whole way, you're gonna get smaller different sections that are gonna be, um, be traveling around. You'll get instead of just one cycle of color um, that goes the stripes, you're gonna get more than one cycle. Um, that's fine, that's a very cool look also. Um, so that is kind of going to be how that works. For something like this, um, something where you've got a huge color variation and it's the entire skein to get there, you're probably going to struggle to make something small with this. 
this is probably not going to work great for making um, planned pooling um, like fingerless mitts or maybe even socks you just I needed 90 stitches to get here um, and so you probably can't do fingerless mitts because this is 90 stitches this is too big for my hand this would be too big for my foot kind of a thing um, and so you may be a little bit limited about exactly what you can create because you've got that lower limit you can't go um, you can't go smaller than the number of stitches that it takes to do a color repeat so you may need to look for a different yarn um, that's going to let you use a smaller stitch count um, or look for a different project um, it may just not be the right uh, the right technique to use for a really small around piece or back and forth piece I hope that that was helpful. I hope that um, you got some good information out of it, and I hope you try um, the hat pattern. I will put a link um, below to the pattern if you'd like to find it.